spirit. Some have come hurt. Lord, I ask that you, they come here with a purpose, Lord, to be lifted, to have their spirits lifted, to have you guide them. Lord, you have done so much for us. You have blessed us. Throughout the week, we are here to see you. Where others have died, where others have passed, where others have not made it off that deathbed, Lord, I thank you for everything that you have done for each and every one of us. We are here because of you, because you have seen something in us to allow us to still be here to praise your name, to see another day. Lord, I ask that you bless every single one of us, the ones that are still coming, the ones that are here. In your precious name we pray, in Jesus' name, amen.
Don't see 
First Kings chapter 3, verses 16 to 27. The day I read today for you, I'll be even be reading from the Amplified Bible. This is what it says. So here we go. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 and following. Then two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. And the one said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth to the child while she was in the house. And on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. And we were alone together. No one else was with us in the house, just we two. Now the woman's son died during the night because she lay on him and smothered him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from his place beside me while your maidservant was asleep and laid him on her bosom and laid her dead son on my bosom. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, behold, he was dead. But when I examined him carefully in the morning, behold, it was not my son, the one whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, for my son is the one who is living, and your son is the dead one. But the first woman said, no, for your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. This is how they were speaking before the king. Then the king said, this woman says, this is my son, the one who is alive, and your son is a dead one. And the other woman says, for no, for your son is a dead one, and my son is the one who is alive. The king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. Then the king said, cut the living child in two and give half to the one woman and half to the other woman. Then the woman whose child was the living one spoke to the king for she was deeply moved over her son. Oh, my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other said, He shall be neither mine nor yours. Cut him. Then the king said, Give the first woman who is pleading for his life the living child, and by no means kill him. She is the mother. I want to talk to you today uh, from the thought of cut it up. Cut it up. Uh, we live in a world today where there is very little value for life. But life begins in the womb and life ends in the tomb. And it is clear from this passage of scripture that one woman cared for the child while the other woman did not care. And she said, cut it up. She said, Don't make no difference to me. But I want to talk to you today about a real mom. I want to talk to you today about the true mother. I want to talk to you today about cut it up. Amen. Cut it up. Uh-huh. Here's a, a quote from a great man. His name was Alex Haley. Some of you all probably heard of him before. He said these words. In every conceivable manner, the family is the link to our past, bridge to our future. 
Y'all hold on to me just for a moment if you can. Hold on to me, all right? And this is the words of a woman by the name of Diane Lomans. This is what she said. And I want you mothers to think good and hard. And I want your fathers to be thinking along these same lines. She said, if I had my child to raise all over again, I would build self-esteem first and a house later. I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I would do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch with my eyes. I'd take more hikes and fly more kites. I'd stop playing seriously and seriously play. I would run through more fields and gaze at more stars. I'd do more hugging and less tugging. Those are the words of Diane Lomas. I want to say sometimes when you all see Pastor um, carry on, I know you all be laughing and you think Pastor's crazy, but there's an emotional connection to people that you love, you spend time with, and you stop playing so serious and learn how to seriously play with them, connect with them. There's something behind that, and I don't want you to underestimate it. Well, I want to say these words when it comes to this passage of Scripture, and that is that Solomon was a wise man, but he didn't just wake up one morning and become wise. The Bible says that, uh, that God appeared to Solomon at night, and he told Solomon to ask what you want from me. Whatever you want me to give you, Solomon, ask me. And it's amazing what Solomon asked for. He said to God, Thou hast showed me great mercy unto David my father. You showed mercy to me, you showed mercy to my father. And you've allowed me to reign in his stead. You allowed me to be able to come behind him. Listen to what he says. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto uh, David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. And you know what? Solomon went to God and he, 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 he asked him, Lord, I'm not asking for much. Just show me how to go out and how to come in, how to lead your people. That's all I want, God. That's all I'm asking for is the wisdom to go out. And so this is what Solomon says. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this great people of yours. And God said to Solomon, because you didn't ask me for riches, you didn't ask me for wealth, you didn't ask me for armor, you didn't even ask me for your enemies. God said, because you have asked me for this thing, I'm going to give you everything. And boy, did he give it to Solomon. Solomon spake 3,000 proverbs, and he sang 1,005 songs. Solomon had more wisdom because he asked God for wisdom. What are you asking God for today? Are you asking for just houses and land? What about those little ones that you got? Oh, this is a good message today. Hallelujah. Some of you all better learn how to uh, take more hikes and fly more kites. Amen. I'm so grateful. I do see some of you all. I see some of you spending time with your children. I love to see the various posts I see. Uh, sometimes the posts can fool you now. Amen. Because <laughs> I know people be posting stuff and they don't spend no time with their children. That, that, that was, a, that was a, to fool you. Amen. I touch your neighbor and say, I ain't no fool. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of God. And the Bible says that wisdom is better than strength. Having no wisdom is better than strength. That's right, because if I'm wise enough, I don't care how much strength you got, I will still 
amen, be able to accomplish more because I've got wisdom, I've got wisdom, I've got wisdom. So this is what the Bible says, wisdom is better than rubies. All the gold, all the silver, all the, the bling you got. Wisdom is better than the bling. And all these things that may be desired are not to be compared to wisdom. Listen, wisdom is better than strength, according to the scripture. It's better than strength. And I want to say to you that, hear me now, the Bible tells us this here. God tells us why he, he chose us and the many generations, amen. I talked about the five generations of the Howard family who are here today. The Lord says, I write unto you fathers because you have known him. That is from the beginning. I write unto you, you young men, because you are strong, or you've overcome the wicked one. And all I'm doing is trying to say to you that God says, I call the old because they know the way. I call the, the young because they're strong. Yes. For the first time in life, we have about five generations of people in the same church. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. One writer called it, Bart Pierce called it, the, the 5G shift. And if you ain't ready to shift into that, those, that 5G where you can accept all people, you can learn to work with, hello, all people, you can't be a part of that shift. You, you go to some churches, they number a bunch of old people sitting up in there. Go to some churches, they number a bunch of young people sitting up there. But you very hardly ever see it like it is at Emmanuel Temple where you have the old, the young, the in-between, and everything. That's the shift that we have to get ready for because it is God who is doing it. We have five generations today. I wish I had the time to talk about it. The, the traditionalists is the oldest generation. We call them the veterans because they, they've done so much already. We call them the builder generation. We call them the builder generation because they went to World War II, came back, built a home, built a family. Their word was their bond. All they needed was a handshake, and, and that thing was just as solid as if it was on pen and paper. That's the builder generation. Yeah, that don't work today. I see you shaking your head. Amen. Amen. You better have it in ink today if you, amen. Then you have the baby boomer. The baby boomer produced this generation here. Now, now, that first generation, the traditionalist, the builder, the veteran, that first one, there are people 75 and above. But those people who are 74 down past my age are the boomer. The boomer is that high um, um, educated group who lived through Vietnam and, and saw um, the, the civil rights move and, and they're... they're, 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 they're into that thing. They, they believe in equity and equality. That's the builder generation. They, they have good parents that work hard, so they work hard. That's the boomer generation. That's, that's our generation. How many boomers we got in the house today? Amen. And, amen. If you're not saying amen, say help me. Oh, no, I'm just having <laughs> Then you have this other generation called Generation X. That's, that's who the beta boomers produce. Generation X. Well, some of them produce Generation X. When you say X on something, I, I'm just having fun now. <laughs> hey, Amen. But, but that generation um, who, 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 who is in their, 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 their um, 50s now, hey, amen, um, they, they came from two-parent homes. They saw some divorce. They saw some breakup. They, they're, they're great people. But they've seen too much. Amen. Um, they, they, they are techno savvy. Now, my three sons are millennial. Highly techno savvy. They, they know technology. And you, you have all these generations in the church. And the last one is Generation Z. And there's a generation now after Z. We also have them in the church. But I want to say this to you today. Hear me. Hear me. God says... When I talked about why he called these generations to be together, he tells us that the age women should be able to teach the young. 
We got real quiet here. I ain't see no I ain't hear no amen or Amen. 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 The age generation. You know, some of y'all start listening to these older women. They do know a thing or two. They can help you. They do have money in their purse. And you don't. Amen. And you might want to listen to that, 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 that older generation. Amen. They can help you. Can I get an amen now then? Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord said in Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, I call the old women that they should teach the young women. Teach them how to be, to, to, to be, um, behave themselves with holiness, that they be not false accusers. That they teach the young women to love their husbands, to love their children. Amen. To be discreet, chase keepers at home. Amen. Uh, be obedient to their husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Got real quiet in here. I must have, must have hit a, a vein or something. I must have hit a major um, artery or something. Amen. Got real quiet in here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. These brothers, they glad they're young men. So, 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 so God knows what's best. And he has given us what's best for us. How the wife and the family is to be structured. Hey, your son is eating this up back there, sister. He's eating this up. Amen. Amen. He's going to get him one of these young girls now. Amen. Amen. Because he's going to remind them, they said, to be obedient, hello, to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You know, if we would all live by the word of God, we would be a much better people in this earth. But because... People do not live by God's principles and the word of God. There's so much abandonment, abuse, and neglect. And I've suffered abandonment and abuse and neglect. And everyone in here has just about suffered abandonment, abuse, and neglect because of those who are supposed to be leading us that they didn't teach us the right way. But, but, but there, there are people that did make it who came out of the abuse and neglect. Let me tell you such one. His name is Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal was raised by a father who was in the military. That was not his biological father, but that's the man who raised him. As soon as he signed with the Orlando Magic, guess who showed up? And Shaquille told him, man, I don't know you. So I'm so my daddy. Hey man, how many of y'all, we don't need no sperm donors around here. Amen. We need some men who will take care of their children. Amen. Amen. She's going to get her a straight rat now. Just, uh, just having some fun, sister. Amen. So, 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 so listen. We see in the Word of God how that we need to be better parents. We need to be better parents and not do like the one woman did. She said, no, um, I don't want him. Just cut him up, amen. <laughs> Praise the name of God. So we all need to take the words of Diane Lomas, Loman serious today. That, that, that you only have your children once in for life. And then they're going to go away. I've lived with my wife now three times longer than I lived with my mother. I spent 17 years with my mom before I went in the military. And, 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 and two times, amen. And, and I've spent 30, over 34 years with Lady Kathy. That's a long time, man. Why are you looking at me like that? These children look like 34 years. Good gracious, amen. So, so we need to care about those lives we are shaping. I don't know if Diane Loman know it, but this is her picture, and she was she was shaping something. And, and and what we all need to value and realize is that children are a heritage of the Lord. Children didn't come just because you were involved in something. They came because of God allowing them to come. Hold on to me. Amen. And please give that child whatever it needs. Amen. Even some tape if necessary. Amen. Amen. So, listen. 
I think about other people who did well. One young man, such name was Najee Harris. Najee Harris lived in more shelters than he probably did home. But boy, when he signed that contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the first thing he did was go create a place for people who were in the predicament that he was in. Don't tell me nothing good can't come out of that bad situation that you're facing right now. Don't you tell me that. I don't believe that. I don't buy that. I'm telling you something good is going to come out of the situation you're in right now. Some of you all have forgotten who's in control of everything. That job is not your source. God is your source. That parent is not your source. God is your source. And so we need to remember that. We need to remember that. For the Bible tells us all we need to. Don't forget the rock from which you were hewn. Don't forget the pit from which you were dug. <laughs> oh, I tell somebody he brought me from a mighty long way. How many of you all ain't supposed to be here? <laughs> I know I ain't going to be here. If you could have seen me at 17, or 18, or 19, but God had mercy on me. Hallelujah. So don't forget the pit from which you were dug. Don't forget the rock from which you were healed. Don't forget where he brought you from. You know the greatest people in the world? The people that don't forget where they came from. Hallelujah. Shaquille didn't forget. He took good care of his mama. Najee didn't forget. He went back and established a place for people who were homeless like he was. With that money that he, he got. So one woman said, no, just cut him up. Just cut him up. Just cut him up. You'll be surprised how many people just believe in just cutting them up. I'm preaching good now. What we're looking for today are some true mothers. Tell somebody, if you're a woman now, tell them I'm a true mother. Amen. Amen. I had to, I had to put a disclaimer on that because, hallelujah. I dare one of you jokers in up here to reach over and tell somebody you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But listen, listen, listen. Solomon made it clear because he heard, he had wisdom and he heard the cry of the mother. He said, give that child to this woman. She is the true mother. She's the real mother. They had this thing about saying, who's your daddy? Amen. Well, we didn't have to try to figure out who was the mother. Solomon had already determined who the mother was. It was a woman who had enough compassion. If I can't have it, I'll give it to someone. At least the child will live. Amen. But that's not the compassion we have in the world today yeah. when it comes to the unborn. Right. Over a quarter of a million African Americans are aborted every year. 259,000 African Americans are aborted every year. You lay down and got it, but now you don't want to get up and raise it. Right. I'll just get rid of it. And what we have learned is that abortion really started by a woman by the name of Margaret Sanger. If you change the S to a D, it'd be Margaret Danger. That, that's a better name. This is what Margaret Sanger said in a letter. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. Margaret Sanger said, we must, we must get African-American ministers who are educated, who have influence, because those people go to church and whatever they preach or say, they'll go along with it. We must get them to believe in abortion. It's amazing that most of these abortion places are in walking different and walking distance of African-American communities. Oftentimes, no less than two miles from an African-American community. 
And, and, and one out of five pre-born American babies are aborted. One out of five. And then here, 2,500 abortions are performed a day. 2,500 abortions are performed a day. All right? Just cut it up. And then what we do know is that 660 million American babies have been aborted since 1973. 60 million, 60 million. Listen, and 20 million of those babies that were aborted were African American, brown and black babies were aborted. 20 million. When they did the census in 1960, it showed that there was only 18 million African Americans in America. So since abortion, we we basically exterminated ourselves. We killed more than we had actually people here. Why? Because we bought the lie of Margaret Sanger or Margaret Danger. Amen. Just get some educated African Americans who will who will go 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 silent or or or, or say it's a woman's right. Amen. Listen. You're wondering why brown and black people only made up about 13% of the population? It is because um, of the amount of abortions that we have. The amount of abortions we have. Listen, this, the, the leading cause of death in African American communities is above heart disease. It is above diabetes. It is above accidents. Is abortion. Number one killer. Number one killer. And so I hope today when it comes to life, you will choose life. I hope that when you're when if you lay down and get it, then be a woman and get up and raise it. That's the bottom line. Now, we can't erase a past, but you can be forgiven for a past. And so, how do I become clean, Pastor? The Bible says we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us all in righteousness. Now, abortion is not anything new. Even in the days of Pharaoh, during the time of Moses, they killed all male children. Moses even was put in a, in a little bulrush and put in the water among the reeds so that he might live. Even in Jesus' days, when, when Jesus was here on earth, they started killing all male child around and below the age of two because they was trying to get Jesus. So this thing of getting rid of children is nothing new. But either... You learn to live it up, or you learn to cut it up. I hope we become a church that will learn to live it up. We're to, we're to embrace life and not be sold the lie of Margaret Singer, who wanted to exterminate uh, people of color. That was her sole purpose behind the abortion. And, and so when you see people who look like you, who, who have bought the lie, and they want to say it's their right, if it's your right, then you should have used some discretion beforehand and not afterhand. Amen. I got three children, right, honey? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and she made sure, amen, uh, some of them made sure we didn't have any more. Amen. Listen, listen, as I close today. I, I plead with you to love your children, spend time with your children. And if there's ever a child that comes that you were not expecting, don't cut it up. Love it up. That same child may come back to bless you like Shaquille O'Neal or Nairi Harris. God is the only one who can take something 
that you think is bad and make some good out of it. As I close today, would you stand in the presence of God today? Hallelujah. Uh, be careful with the liquids in there. Okay? All right. okay. There may be someone here today, and you know in your heart of hearts that you need to do a couple of things. First of all, you, you need salvation. And if you feel like you need to make better time with your own family and your children. I look at these mothers 